Let's take a look at the self-learning, self-tuning features of the Terminator X. Stick around. What's going on tuners? Welcome back to the garage and today we are going to fire up the laptop fire up the Nova and see that the self-learning system is working properly. I uh, had a bad sensor and I didn't like the location of the sensor so I went ahead and dropped the exhaust off, welded up the original bung and put a new bung in. Whenever you add a, a wide band bung, you gotta be very particular about making sure there's no pinholes ar around your weld. And in fact, I went around once got a nice weld but there were a couple spots that could have been suspect and rather than make it look good i'm just going to go ahead and hit those spots again because pinhole leaks will absolutely destroy your tuning process that is about the worst thing any kind of exhaust leaks upstream of it i'm a little bit nervous because of the header flanges on this uh, you know, I've got gaskets in there. Hopefully that will be enough. But if the thing tends to run lean, we're gonna go back and readdress those. And unfortunately, it's not like I can pull these headers off while the motor's in the car. So I'm probably gonna have to pull the motor off and then we might end up cutting those header flanges off going over to V-bands because they seal a lot better and having your exhaust system sealed up is paramount whenever it comes to tuning. But today we're talking about the Terminator X basically the Holly EFI system. So the HP, the Dominator, Terminator X, all of them are gonna work the same. Same with the sniper stuff like that. They have a closed loop operation with a wide band that self learns. And you've got two tables. You've got your base fuel table, then you have the learn table. Now there's also closed loop and learn. There's two different modes. Closed loop works like it sounds. Your oxygen sensor's making adjustments on the fly, but the learn table, the learn system, logs those adjustments like a long-term fuel trim on a stock ECU and puts those into a separate table. Then we can go in and transfer those changes from that separate table to the main fueling table and uh, you know make adjustments, smooth all that out as we go. So it gives you the ability to see the adjustments that the closed loop is doing. They're technically two separate things that are working together. Closed loop operations will make corrections on the fly, learn, logs those corrections into a table so we can see what's going on. So let's get the laptop set up and take a look at it. Okay, we're connected up to the Terminator. We're gonna go ahead and pull the logs out of, or pull the config out of it to make sure that we're working with the latest version. And we'll go ahead and save this global file as Smoke Monster. The last one we did was the sensor update. Let's go ahead and switch this over and save it as closed loop. I had closed loop turned off during the initial start because the wideband was not working. I wanted to make sure that I had a working wideband before I enabled closed loop. So I have to go under uh, the system ICF, closed loop learn, and we're gonna go ahead and enable it. And we're gonna set a minimum coolant temp because we don't necessarily want, it. actually we're gonna leave that off for now. We'll set that up later on. You don't necessarily want closed loop operations on a cold motor. Uh, you can set that down to like 100, 120 degrees to give the motor a chance to warm up a little bit because the motor temperature does affect combustion. Uh, pretty straightforward on the rest of this. We're gonna leave it with a 50% plus or minus adjustment and then we're going to enable the learn. Same ordeal. The gain, as I talked about earlier, is how it how aggressively it learns the changes. At 100% gain, it's gonna take the changes as soon as closed loop sees them and update them into the table. As you get the tune dialed in, you're gonna to wanna to back the gain down. You know, drop it down to 75%, 50%, and then maybe down to around 30% and just leave it there. You don't necessarily have to transfer those changes into the table, but at the same time, Gain's good at the beginning, towards the end of it, we don't need it as much. So let's go ahead and sync this up. We'll send it to the ECU, and this might require a restart, we'll see. Nope, we're good to go. And we'll connect up with the USB link and look at our gauges. And okay, so we're good to go, we're initializing here. I'm going to try and start the Nova up, fingers crossed. Uh, so, Bulk head connector, had to move a pin over, should be good to go now. I'm gonna power it up and verify that I'm getting my 12 volt start signal over to the, or 12 volt switch on signal over to the Terminator X. running 
pretty rich. Let's dial it back some. So, as you saw, closed loop operation is working, but learning wasn't. And there's a reason behind that. Whenever there is any kind of fueling corrections going on, uh, such as in this case, coolant temperature enrichment, close or uh, learning is not going to work. Closed loop was doing great. We we're looking for a 13.6 idle AFR. It was nailing it, and it's about 10%. It was was what we were seeing on the correction based on the gauges. So I'm going to come in here and bring out our corrections to make sure that we're not getting any kind of enrichment corrections for now. And we'll flash this in, start it back up, and see if we go into learning then. Let's take a look at what we got here. We've got a learn table that populated some data in there and we're gonna go ahead and, and approach this two ways. So I wanna save this, let's go offline. We'll save this. And we're gonna transfer the learn to the base table. And it's gonna give us the option to smooth this. We wanna go ahead and do that so we're not getting any crazy stuff. Now if we go over to our base fuel, we can see what it's done here. It has raised everything up. Uh, Probably, you know, as I said, 10, 15, oh, excuse me, 10, 15 percent or so. And so what I'm actually going to do is uh, go back. I'm going to close this out, open it back up, and I'm going to make a shift to the entire table to start off. So if we come back in here, we've got our learn table. We're at eight. Actually, no, not because on the edges we're only in a couple percent. So down below we'll want to. So let's transfer that over. Come over to base fuel and look at kind of the values that we have here and let's offset out from there. And so we can come in here. Let's just go ahead and start up here in the corner. Grab these and Let's offset six. Kind of bring this stuff in line. And I'll do kind of the same thing here. Let's offset six here. Now what I'm gonna do is smooth this area. And kind of smooth this area out too. So, theoretically we can probably linearize this area some. So we want to fill the columns. It's looking a little better. And then let's smooth all this again. And take a look at our graph. Not bad, still pretty smooth on our graph. So we're going to leave this is, as is. I'm going to go ahead and load this in. And let's fire it up again and we'll watch our uh, learn table and see if we got a little bit closer now.
Okay, we got our new values, and as you can see, we're in the 2% range. We got a lot closer just from making one adjustment already. This is really good. We'll go ahead and transfer this one into, let it do its thing, smooth it, and we can look at our base fuel again. There's our fan, finally. And we'll save this. We're good to go. Let's wrap up. So that's the basics of the closed loop fuel learning system on the Terminator X. And as I said, this basically applies to all Holly platform EFI setups. Dominator, HP, Sniper, all of them kind of use the same methodology in, in the backside of it. And so what we ended up having to do, as I said, was go in, clear out any corrections, uh, like coolant temp uh, corrections to make sure that wasn't keeping us out of learn. Now, I'm gonna go back and put those back in. Now that we've kind of got that area dialed in, it's firing up pretty good about every time that we crank. Uh, one or two rotations and that thing's just lighting off right away. So I'm really happy with where it's at. We might be able to address uh, some cranking fuel, might be able to dial it back a little bit now that we know where we're at. But honestly, if it works, I may not mess with it all that much. And then we're just gonna focus on whenever the snow melts and we can actually get this thing out and driving it, doing the rest of the tuning, which just follows the process that we did right here. You go out, you drive, you let the thing learn, populate data into the learn table, and then copy those over to the base fuel table and kind of smooth everything out and make it look realistic. So if you've got any questions, as always, hit up the comments down below. Make sure and stick around if you haven't subscribed so you can get in some more uh, Holly tuning. And I'm gonna get back to it. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.